I gave my life to Jesus. And he said to me, only the Lord could do something like this. He goes, and I am a firm believer. Well, I lost it. We would have many stories uh, of experiences like that. And so even though, uh, or, or I guess we rejoice with heaven, right? For, for all those souls that, that came forward that day. Uh, but even if we had made the way for just the one, it would have all have been worth it. Amen? I'm sure that you're all dying to see what that event actually looked like. And so that's for our media team who put together a fantastic recap video for us. And so enjoy this video.
to come alongside you in that faith development. And so would you make a commitment, families, to be here on Sundays, to come along uh, other families, to connect. You're going to hear about different opportunities to connect as a church family today and through the rest of, of the days here. But would you make that commitment to make sure that your child is present at Children's Church? And would you make that commitment to other families to do that as well? Second, brothers and sisters, would you make the commitment to reach out beyond yourself, to reach out to the couple, to the family next to you, to the family across the, the pew from you, to the family that you see at check-in and check-out in Children's Church, and connect beyond saying hello? Would you make that commitment to keep those children that came forward and all the other children that attended and the ones that will attend y'all? Would you keep them in prayer? Would you make that commitment? And lastly, but not least, all of us here, all of us watching online, would you make the commitment to continue to pray for those souls that came forward on, on Thursday night and the ones that will come that you might not get to hear about? This will happen at Children's Church. It will happen with parents at home while they're reading their bedtime Bible story. But would you keep our children and this generation in prayer so that families would come so that people would give their time and effort to raising that generation, that mentors will come forward and pour in time and their wisdom and knowledge into all of these youth, into all of these children that are coming that need that support from the community. And so those are our asks for you today. Amen? And then I was like, amen? Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you. So, y'all are lucky today because we are going to have a double dose of worship, y'all. And I'm going to bring up Ephraim. Ephraim Polanco. Ephraim. How old are you, Ephraim? About 14. He is 14 years old. Ephraim recently attended a New Jersey um, state called Camp. And called Camp was for those youth who are feeling that God is calling them into ministry. I know, church mom proud. And so Ephraim had lots of learning. So when I asked him what was your biggest takeaway, he told me one of his biggest takeaways was about worship and the meaning of worship. And so before we jump into our first round of worship, Ephraim is going to share why worship is important, what you learn, and what that means to you. Says, the Lord says, these people come near me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Their worship of me is based on merely human rules they have been taught. Let's enter into this time of worship with eyes fixed on him. Thank you, everyone. So, with that, I am going to call our VBS Scuba Worship Team up. And while they get here, well, give them a come on. There you go. While they get here, hello, ladies. While they get here and get ready. Um, so, Ephraim says something really important. Oh, we're also going to invite uh, Premia. Watch out, y'all. Watch out. The ten some of the tentacles are under control. Some of them, you know. Careful, mama. Okay. So let's make a way. And while we get ready, here's something Ephraim said that it's not about what you look like, and it's not about how you sound. And this is important today of all days, y'all, because we're going to ask you to bust out your best worship dance moves. Yes. Everyone is going to dance today. We're going to, I know some of y'all are excited, some of you guys are like, mm. 
So remember the wisdom of our 14 year olds. And we're going to praise God in our VBS way today. And so everybody rise up to your feet and make sure you got enough space. You might need to displace a little bit. And then Miss Natalie and Miss Gordon are going to lead us into worship. Hello, good morning, church. I remember when um, Vanessa, when we had her talking about worship, worship, and I was listening to the songs, and I was like, these songs are very simple words, and I think sometimes in worship, you know, it gets really complicated, like the wording, and it's just so simple that it may be, to get in His presence is simple, and we like, we overcomplicate it as Christians, and just being like children, and it's in, they don't know anything else, but they have, they feel that worship. Ooh, they feel that worship in ways that I cannot explain. It, it's been a pleasure for me. It was a pleasure for me and Natalie to lead your guys' children in worship. And we're excited to show you the dance moves we did over the week. So the first song we're going to do is Thank God. And I want to review so everyone doesn't have no excuse. Everyone can sing, okay? So the chorus of the song, it goes like, Thank God. Everybody, thank God. Woohoo, yes. The good things you do. Yes, thank God. Right, my turn again. You're my light and my. Well, thank God. All right. The next part is thank God. Do it again. For the good things you made. Let's see. And we go, whoa. Thank God. Let's do it. Thank God.
this last song was one of our favorite songs as a worship team. So it's called Forever God, Forever Love. So I'm just going to go over the chorus for you guys. So. We just, like, when we heard this song, it was, like, our absolute favorite. And kind of like we were talking about earlier, so simple, but so beautiful. Like, it brought, like, tears to our eyes. And it's just, like, the main focus of worship. Just, like, honestly, just acknowledging God and His presence in your life. So, as we're doing, we can come up and just get ready to do this. Um, okay. Thank you. Okay. Circle forever, God, and then forever love. Okay, that's it. I just want to let y'all know, um, the next worship team, that for next week, you'll also have to make dance moves. Forevermore, there will need to be dance moves. <laughs> Amen. So thank you guys so much for engaging with us in our DBS celebration. We're going to go ahead and dismiss our children's church. Check-in stations are right back here. And we're going to be meeting in the classrooms downstairs.
So let's give a hand to our kiddos as they head out to Kids Church. I'll see you there. Woo. Pastor Albert. Oh, watch out for Octavia. She sings. Sing the goodness, not sing. Amen. How many are blessed today? How many have a great time in the Lord Jesus Christ? Amen. And so with Vanessa saying about the dance moves, I would like to see the pastoral team do some dance moves like that. That would be awesome. What do you think, Pastor Jim? He was doing it. I saw him. We got on video, so you guys can watch it when we get back home. God bless you, and welcome to Valley Chapel. How many are blessed to be in the house of the Lord? My name is Pastor Albert Rosado. I'm one of the associate pastors at, at, at TLC. God has been so good. You can call me Pastor Albert. You can call me Albert. You can call me Al. This week I had a new one. You can call me Al Pastor, even though I don't eat tacos very much. But it's good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Who's here for the very first time in this building? Can I raise, raise your hand? Amen. I see some hands here. We have some connection cards. Hassan. We have Vicky. Get those up. Keep your hands up. And give them a hand clap again. Amen. You see, here at Valley Chapel, good things are happening. Amen. And when good things are happening, I want to be a part of that. I don't know if when, when you're in the streets, when you're outside and you see a line or, or something good happening, you're, you're curious. You want to see what's going on in that place. And you want to be part of that good thing that's happening. And here at Valley Chapel, good things are happening. And I want to be part of that. I don't want to be the person that's looking through the windows. I want to be in the house of the Lord, be in the hands and feet of Jesus. Amen? And so here we have a motto where we discover truth, which we know truth is Jesus Christ. We develop life-giving relationships, and we do good. That's what we do at CLC and Valley Chapel. And one way that we develop, we develop life-giving relationships is through life groups. How many have been part of a life group? I don't see many hands. How many have been part of the rooted life group that we've been having at TLC? Not many hands also here today. And so you have an opportunity to be part of a life group called Rooted that has been a blessing in many of our lives. If you went to the people that raised their hands that were part of the Rooted life group, they will tell you how of, of, of God has showed up, how you're able to develop that life in your relationship. How you're able to cry with with someone that, that you build a relationship with. How you're able to laugh with that person, get to know that person. That's what life group does. You see, Jesus did not call us to serve Him by ourselves. He called us to serve in community. He's called us to come together and do what God has done. Right when Jesus came to this world, He wants us to come together and spread the word. Of Christ to this world that's broken. Amen? And I want to be part of that. I don't want to sit on my hands. I want to be doing what God has called me to do. Amen? And so we have some uh, some video announcements and also a, a video about what Rooted is all about. And I'll come back. God bless you. Morning, TLC. And Valley Chapel family. Yes, we're so happy that you've decided to come worship with us today. My name, or mi nombre, is Noel Polanco. And I'm Victoria Gration, and like Noel said, we are so excited that you decided to worship with us, whether you're in person or online. Welcome. Welcome, welcome. As you can see, we had such an incredible Amazing. week at VBS. We hope that you and your kiddies enjoyed VBS week. It was really great. It was great. But what was your favorite part of VBS? You know what? I loved every time that we said God is a forever friend and everybody responded, thanks God. Oh my goodness. Just the, the, the children learning about God and his yes. love for them and that he's their forever friend. Amazing. That's right. Amazing. You know, there are so many things happening here at TLC and Valley Chapel that's coming up soon. Let's take a look at what's happening in the next few weeks. Mm -hmm. 
I got into Rooted because I was longing to find a group for fellowship and to be a part of something more in the church besides um, Sunday fellowship. When I was first invited into the Rooted group, I didn't really have meaningful connections at church and I, I, I was hoping that it would create those, those connections with, you know, with the members that I would see on Sundays regularly. Key learnings that we, uh, we took away from the Rooted sessions were the need to have a close relationship with God in a community. But when you do that as a community, it, it makes it uh, a lot more uh, valuable. And you, you feel the sense that you are not alone. Some of the key learnings and things I enjoyed the most was writing out my prayers to God. It was something I never, I never done before. Rooted had an impact in my everyday life by helping make time for prayer and reading the Word of God and worshiping and spending time in community. Those things moved up my list. And consistently doing that for 10 weeks through Rooted, along with some other folks, then help me to make that a really strong habit that I can now carry beyond Rooted. I absolutely believe it's necessary for everybody. If you want to take the next step to have a, an intimate relationship with, with God, if you want to have people supporting you, people praying with you, people studying the word with you, I think it's an experience that is very rewarding and I, um, I would encourage to Take a heap of faith, try it, yeah. and you will see the impact that we're making on that. Please sign up on the TLC app or website. We have our annual service in the park. Get ready for a fun-filled Sunday. This will be at 10 a.m. We get to worship Jesus Christ at Woodland Park in Hasbrook Heights. Say goodbye to debt. Join us for Financial Peace University. This will be a free course offered by Transformation Life Church. There will be nine weekly sessions on Zoom starting September 26th at 7 p.m. Register online for free access to resources and classes, and please invite your friends and family to join. I hope you're ready for a little mystery because we have our mystery dinner show Friday, September 20th at 7 p.m. and two shows Saturday, September 21st at 2 p.m. and 6.30 p.m. It's going to be $30 per person for ages 15 and above. Purchase your tickets online. Women's Retreat, October 4th through October 6th. Join us for an empowering and uplifting weekend experience at the TLC Women's Retreat in Mount Bethel, Pennsylvania. Pre-register online by September 1st to get an early bird discount. We have our baptism service on September 29th at Valley Chapel during our 11 a.m. service. Sign up online or contact Pastor John Pra. There are so many ways to get connected here at TLC and at Valley Chapel. For more information and to stay up to date on all the upcoming events, please download our TLC app or visit our TLC website, tlcassembly.org, or check out the Valley Chapel website. Now, let's continue in worship. Someone that, when you ask them to come to a Sunday service, no, I don't want to go. But if you invite them to a mystery dinner, they might say, yeah, maybe I'll go. And you're able to develop life in a relationship at that moment. You can present Jesus Christ while they're in the building, uh, in the house of the Lord. Amen? And so I applaud you. You will have a great time. You're having a great show. You're having a, a, a great dinner. It's going to be a Southern-style, family-style dinner. And so you can't beat that. Pastor from being in from being in Indiana, I think he's gonna love this. It'll be a great time, amen. And so, by show of hands, who's gonna be there? I want to see every. We have the cameras ready. Make sure you got these people, amen. And so, we want to continue to this epic of worship. I'm gonna ask for the ushers to come up as we're gonna collect our tithes and offerings, uh, uh, amen. We know that God has been good to us, right? And only as for just a small portion. So, we want to present this to the Lord, Lord Father. 
So we give you thanks for today, Lord. Thank you for for being in your house of worship, Father God. We pray for these tithes and offerings that we give them up to you, Lord. That you will bless them. That you will continue to enlarge your territory, Lord. And use us while you're enlarging their territory, Father God. Lord, Father, we give you thanks. And this we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. And as the offering is being collected, we have David Ferraro on the grand piano there. He was part of Fine Arts this year, and he was able to advance to the Nationals this year. And so while the offering is being collected, he can be playing a piece for us. God bless.
Search your heart for a second here. When's the last time you spent time with God just to spend time with Him? Take a few seconds. I'm 
When's the last time you spent time with God without an agenda? You spent time with Him and you, you didn't come with your laundry list of, of things that you needed to pray for and things that you needed done in your time. I mean, when's the last time that you just sat there and you spent time to be with Him? Think about it for a second. This is such a deep down, but I want us to bring this to the surface. Wait, is it something I actually do? Or, or what is our relationship like? If you look at a healthy relationship, a healthy relationship requires these moments where there isn't an agenda. My wife, Alina, um, one of her love languages, I'm going to ask permission to share this, one of her love languages is quality time. Right? So you may have heard, any, any quality time people in the room? Okay, there's a few of us in here. And so for her, she needs space that is set apart for us to just be together. She doesn't want to be talking about budgets. She doesn't want to be talking about shopping lists. She doesn't want to be talking about the dishes that needs to be done or the house that needs to be cleaned. She wants space where it's set apart for us to just be together, know each other, and grow in our relationship in a deeper way. Our focus is on each other. Now, we've all experienced relationships on the opposite side of that, too. Relationship where every time you see that person, they're asking you to do something. And what is that like? Is that a very fun friendship? A lot of times we wouldn't call those people friends. We would probably relate to them a little bit more like a boss and we're an employee. But unfortunately, a lot of us, including myself, I'm not exempt from this, we treat our relationship with God like this. We come before Him and it's very transactional. And I come in prayer and I have this list of God, these are the things I need you to do. And then we sit down in His Word and we begin to read and it's like, okay. These are the things he wants me to do. And it's this back and forth. I need you to do this. You need me to do that. We do those things, and we're all good. And there's this transactional relationship, but we don't go any deeper. And then we wonder why we're miserable in prayer. And then we wonder why, man, Sunday morning's here again. I got to go to church again. I got to wake up and get dressed and drag the kids again. And it starts to feel, is this really worth it? And maybe it's not so worth it because we're not growing in friendship with God. We're treating Him as an employee treats a boss. I want to invite you into what Jesus invites us to in a deeper, more fulfilling way that God calls us to relate to Himself. Could you imagine your relationship with God was vibrant in the sense where you thought, when I wake up in the morning, the first thing I want to do is spend time with God? Do you imagine Sunday morning was your favorite time of the week, not a week, not a time of the week that felt like an obligation? Jesus invites us into this. He invited his disciples into this relationship through friendship with him in John chapter 15. John 15 verses 14 through 15 says, You're my friends if you do what I command you. No longer do I call you servants, for the servant does not know what his master is doing. But I call you friends. All that I've heard from my father. that this invitation that he gave to his very own disciples, the invitation that he's giving us this morning, an invitation to an increase of intimacy through friendship with him. And we've just been singing a song, I am a friend of God, I'm a child of God, but we've talked about that this morning, this, this morning. But I, I just wanted to add a caveat to that, just to kind of perk your ears up a little bit, because not every one of us is a friend of God. Not every person who calls himself a Christian is a friend of God. And this is the reality. Friendship with God is a free invitation that's given to us by God, but like salvation, we have to receive it. And so we can't just sit here this morning comfortable in our seats saying, well, I'm a friend of God, it's all good, but you don't really know him. How could you call someone a friend across the room and you don't even know their name? You don't know their history. You don't know anything about them. And so this is available to all of us this morning. There's no caveats other than we have to do what God has put forward through his word to us. And so what I want to do is look at the life of some of his disciples, these friends of his that he called his own friends. I want to look at the life of some of his disciples and say, what does it look like to actually be a friend of God? How do I become a friend of God? And we're going to invite you over to this response what does it look like to be a friend of God? Would you turn with me to Luke chapter 10? We're just going to spend a few minutes here before we close. Luke chapter 10. We're going to be in verses 38 to 42. We're going to look at the life of two of Jesus' disciples, a story we didn't begin to read, the story of Mary and Martha. I'm sure you're familiar with this story. Mary and Martha. These are some of Jesus' closest friends. There's a lot of people who believe Mary, Martha, and their brother Lazarus, the one Jesus raised from the dead, believe that these 
these three were like family to him. You have those close friends that are like family. They believe that these were that kind of people to Jesus. And so here in Luke chapter 10, verse 38, we read this. As they went on their way, so Jesus is there with his disciples, Jesus enters a village. And a woman named Martha welcomed him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to his teaching. But Martha, she was distracted with much serving, and she went up to him and she said, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Tell her then to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are anxious and troubled about many things, but one thing is necessary. Mary has chosen the good portion. This will not be in vain. Such is the Lord's story. The grace of the Lord Jesus is invited into the house of Mary and Martha, these two sisters, and immediately we're hit with what they're doing. Here we have Martha, it says that she's there and she's serving. She's distracted. And then you have Mary, on the other hand, who is sitting at the Lord's feet and listening to his teaching. Now, if I were going to ask you, who do you relate to more? How many in the room are Marthas? Marthas? I would say probably most of us relate to Martha. There are very few people that I know that are just, man, I've just been sitting at the feet of Jesus too long. It's just too easy for me to get one of those presents and pray and read the Bible. There are very few people I know because there's so many things in our lives that we're caught up in. There's so much busyness. There's so much chaos. And this is reality. This is life. We're all in this picture. And we're all kind of relating to Martha a bit. And the interesting thing about this story, Martha isn't doing anything bad. She's actually doing something really good. She walks in. She invites Jesus in. Jesus comes in dinner. So she's setting up the house like any of us would do. You invite someone over for dinner. You're going to set it up and make it look nice. And we see that she's serving Jesus. This is a good thing she's doing. She's not distracted, making business calls. Okay, Mary, you take care of that. I'm going to go and do chores in my family. She's there. She's focused. She's, she's serving. But there's still a disconnect. And she's serving Jesus, and then she starts to get mad at Mary. Anyone else get mad when someone else is sitting around and you're doing all the work? <laughs> and again, I think we probably agree with her. Yeah, yeah, get her, Martha. Go ahead. Tell Jesus. Jesus! Sister, like, come on, get off your butt. I yell at my sister as you're back there. I yell at her for not doing the dishes. That was me. Get off your butt. Jesus, she's being lazy. And again, at this point, we're still on board. Yeah, that's right, Martha. And we're getting ready for this climax of, okay, Jesus is going to come and put her in her place. Mary, serving is better than sitting. Get up. Start working. We'll talk later. Jesus said he would. He breaks down our natural understanding of what's right. He comes and reorganizes it. He says, oh, Martha, Martha. He says, you're anxious. You're troubled about a lot of things, but there's one thing that's necessary. Mary, she's chosen the better part. She's chosen the good portion, but I'm not going to take that away. And so I want to look at Mary as the example. This is what the friends of God are like. This is what God is looking for when he's looking for somebody to be his friend. Mary comes in. The first thing we see about Mary is that a friend of God is someone that prioritizes God. As soon as Jesus walks into the room, the priorities of Mary were revealed. So this is this is my guess. This is just speculation, um, but I think we can make this assumption for the sake of it. My guess is that as Martha was preparing things before Jesus came, Mary was right there beside her preparing those same things. My guess was that Mary was there alongside her. I don't think that Martha was the serving type, and Mary wasn't the serving type. If you look at the, the cultural background of this day and age, women were the ones who would get things ready. They were the ones who were going to serve and prepare. And so I don't think it was just, well, Martha has this serving personality, and, and she's just a go-getter, and she's a type A, and I'm a more of a Martha, and you can't hold me down. And Mary, she was just a flower child, and she just liked to to ease into the clouds and daydream, and I should just like to sit at other people's feet and listen. A lot of times we've heard this, you do have a Mary spirit or a Martha spirit. And we compare the two of them, and we get un- uncomfortable when we look at this, and we're, we're trying to see which one am I, or, or which one should I be like. But I think the better assumption isn't that Mary was this way and Martha was this way. I think the better assumption is that Mary chosen to pray 
prioritize Jesus above all other things. I think that Mary, she knew that in order to be his friend, I need to be with him. I need to prioritize him. I want you to know this morning, friendship with God is not for people who are introverted. Friendship with God aren't for the people who are introverts and like to spend time alone. Friendship with God is for everyone. It's going to be more difficult for people with different personalities. I think so. Some of, some of us, it's hard to hold this down because we need to go and we want to do and we want to see things get done. And so it may be a little more difficult for you, but still Jesus is inviting all of us into this friendship. There's a pastor by the name of Corey Russell, and he says, the point of this story is not whether I should be Mary or Martha. It's that I should be Mary before Martha. Not Mary or Martha, it's Mary before Martha. And so we're looking at it wrong when we compare them. Jesus is saying, what have you prioritized? Mary is there, Jesus walks in, everything else has to wait so that she can sit at his feet. That's what it means to prioritize God. Now, we live in a culture where we can prioritize hundreds of things. Anyone have more than one priority? It's like, I have too many priorities. Here's the thing, the word priority literally means first concern. It means first concern. And so you see Jesus is looking at Martha. And what does he say? You're anxious and you're troubled about many things. And a lot of us have a lot of anxiety in our lives and in our hearts because we have way too many things grasping for our attention. And we haven't chosen to prioritize one of them. A lot of us were in trouble, and you're in here today, and you're already thinking about what you got to do later. And Jesus is like, I'm right here, right now, I'll sit at my feet. No, no, but wait, Jesus, you don't understand. i got to do this, i got to do that. And if I don't do this now, that's going to be pushed back. And our minds are just constantly going with everything else. And Jesus says, wait. You'll get to those things. But there's a first thing that we need to come into. This word priority literally means first concern. And the reality is, Martha, she was a friend of, like, literally in his inner circle. So Martha knew Jesus. Martha loved Jesus. Martha was going to see Jesus raise her brother from the dead. Martha was around him. But in all of that, she still didn't prioritize him. That should be a little scary to us. We can sit in here week after week after week doing the Jesus stuff, singing the Jesus song. There comes a moment where we have to ask ourselves, am I prioritizing Jesus himself? Am I prioritizing the man who has called me, who has saved me, who has loved me, who has healed me, who has cleansed me? Am I going to take the time and put him first above all other things? Jesus gets lost in the mix. She wants to be right. She wants to try to see who he is. And Jesus says she can do it to the best of her. So I want to say this. This isn't to say that there aren't other important things in life. I'm not going to go home with the dishes today. <laughs> Unfortunately. But i got to think about my wife. I have to serve at church. I have to go to my job. I have to work with my students. I have a desire to see God's kingdom come and His will be done here on earth as it is in heaven. There are important things that we have to do in life. That's not the point of this message that just do this, don't do that. It's a matter of priority. There are first things. We take things full and hold them. Everything is important. And then nothing else. Everything matters so much. And what really matters at all? This was the life of Martha, but Mary, she's saying, Jesus, I'm going to take time to prioritize you. And this is the key to friendship with God. Second point, friendship with God. A friend of God spends time with God. So prioritizing God. The first concern of our lives will always take time out of our schedules. How many lifelong friends do you have that you only met once? <laughs> right? It just doesn't work. If you're going to have a rule, a law of friendship, it's that it takes time. You can't outsource your friendship to somebody else. Hey, would you mind helping make this person my friend for a few days? Or, and then just like, tell them all about me. And like, like, it doesn't work. There needs to be a one-on-one -on -one intimate relationship where you're getting to know each other. I think the issue for a lot of us is that we've made sitting at the feet of Jesus a luxury in life and not a necessity. I'll get to it when I get home. I love to spend time with God. I think if I asked you, there would be a lot of people who would love to. I'd love to read my Bible. I'd love to get that time to come to church and worship. But how often are we doing that? We think, I, I get 
get to do it when I get to it. And if I'm extra busy that day, I'm just going to wait and I'll get to it later. I'll do it next week. I'll do it tomorrow. Jesus doesn't look at time with him as a, a luxury. He looks at it as a necessity. Martha, one thing is necessary. One thing is necessary. So prioritizing God means that we have to have this core belief that this is not a waste of time. Sitting at the feet of Jesus is not a waste of time. This is the most important thing that I can be doing. It's not an if I have time. It's this is the first thing I do with my time. Now, this is hard. You ever sit down with a friend? You ever sit down with someone so deep? You ever sit down and you read your Bible? Oh, wait, that's new when scripts come out. Everything that you've ever forgot. I, I heard someone make a joke. If I ever forget something to do, I just open up my Bible and then I remember it. Right? Because it will always come back. There will always be a distraction that is going to come and lift itself to the surface. And here's why. You have an enemy. You have an enemy that will do anything to keep you from connecting with your Savior. Even if it's as simple as add this thing to your to-do list. There's a, a man, one of the world's greatest missionaries, uh, by the name of Hudson Taylor, you may have heard of him. Basically, this is a man that opened up the gospel to go throughout all of China. So this is a man who was a man of God. He was a pioneer. He was there uh, kind of on the outskirts of China, praying, interceding. And by the end of his life, he saw hundreds of missionaries going throughout all of the regions of China and seeing many, many transformations before all of these things, the 1800s, before China was exposed to the gospel. Today, he and his organization have still left. There are over 2,500 people that are still working because of the work he started in missions. This man, a man of God, a man that we would look at, I don't know if I could ever do that. This is what he says about spending time with God. Satan's always going to find something for you to do. But you have to be occupied about that time with God, even if it's only arranging a window box. <laughs> okay, I've got to make my bed real quick. I gotta make that phone call. I gotta send that text. And anything to get in the way of us being in this place. And we're in good company. If you get distracted and offended with God, you're in good company. But you have to fight for it. You have to prioritize it. If you're anything like me, to spend time with God is sometimes a little, a little bit more difficult than actually serving Him. For me, to think of myself as a friend of God is a little bit harder than to think of myself as His servant. It's a little closer. It's a little more intimate. It's easy for me to think of him as Lord of Lords and King of Kings, which we need to do. It's easy for me to think of him as the one that I have to give my life to. It's a little bit harder for me when I have to get intimate with him and spend time with him and sit at his feet. Because you know what happens in that place? That's when all your stuff comes up. When everything begins to surface and you begin to bring yourself truly before him, you say, here I am, Lord. And sometimes, I see this in myself, I see it in others, we can serve God as a way to actually hold Him at arm's length. Martha did the same thing. Martha, you're distracted by your serving. I'm going to keep you over here, Jesus. I love you, I'm thankful for you, but when you get too close, I get too scared. And here's the good news, when you get close to Him, you can trust Him that He will never condemn you, He will never leave you, He will never forsake you. Get close to him. Let him love you. Spend time with him. Because out of that is going to lead us into this last part. Out of that is going to lead us into the living hope. A friend of God and a servant. So again, I talked about different personalities and types of people who some of us are still like, how long do I have to sit in this room for? Do I have to sit for 10 minutes and then I go on and do the good stuff? Right? We struggle because it's, it's not a tangible, I'm getting something done, I'm seeing something Finished. And so we think, how do I, how do I get to the real work? What does that mean? But what if the real work was actually happening in that secret place at the feet of Jesus? And out of that, the life of fruit. Out of that, the life of servant grows. Anyone ever hear of the man Martin Luther, one of the great reformers, probably the, the face of the Protestant Reformation in the 1500s? He once said, "I have so much work to do today." so much work to do today, therefore I'm going to have to spend three hours in prayer this morning. He knew. He knew that if I don't bathe everything I'm doing in prayer, it will be fruitless. 
if I don't spend time at the feet of Jesus, none of this is going to come to pass. None of it is going to be it's going to be powerful. None of it is going to be what I really desire it to be. And so I have to actually sit and make it feel like I'm doing nothing. But in reality, when it feels like I'm doing nothing, God is able to do His thing. When I'm sitting there, He's working. It's not like we're just sitting there playing patty cake. He's doing something bigger and better than we ever could, and maybe empowering you in that moment to do something beyond your natural power. This is the invitation for people who are friends of God. They will live for God. They're going to be willing to give their life for Him. We see in Scripture that those who prioritize God, they will spend in time with Jesus. The ones who spend the most time with the Holy Spirit on earth, they're actually the ones who went all the way and gave their life for Him. They traveled the cross and they said, No, no, no. I know this Jesus. I know He loves me. And I'm so close to Him. I'm literally willing to lay down my life on His behalf. Ryan Scooby, who is a uh, businessman known as the Father, said it's one of the great mysteries of the Christian faith that God traveled in time and space to come among us, sit around a campfire in the desert, and be friends with a bunch of regular people. Through these friendships, Jesus turned the world upside down. Serving, which seems like a good thing, but we could be serving things that don't change the world. One person could be serving Jesus today at church, but in their mind they're thinking, I have to serve him because if I don't serve him, he's not going to love me. If I miss church this week, I know he's going to be upset with me. And so I have a little bit of this fear that if I'm not in church, if I'm not with him, if I'm not serving him, that there's this disconnect. And so that first person is serving Jesus in church on a Sunday morning out of a sense of obligation. I have to do this or else. Then you have the second person who's in the same church, serving at the same service, serving on the same team. Let's give it up for our welcome team. Let's, let's use the welcome team for an example. And they're serving at the same church at the same time in the same service, but they're serving Jesus, not out of a sense of obligation. They're serving Him because He saved them. They're serving because they know what He gave them. They're serving because they knew they're a friend of God. Without Him, they would be lost and dead, and they would be. <sighs> you know what I'm talking about? Two different people doing the same exact things for two completely different reasons and out of two completely different motivations. Who do you think is going to give their life and lay it down for Jesus? The one who feels obligated and feels shame, and one who says, "You know what? I can't do this anymore. I'm just going to do my own thing. I'm just going to kind of keep God at arm's length." Or the one who says, no, 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 he is my friend, he's my lover, he will never leave me or forsake me. I miss church this week, it's okay, he still loves me. I'm going to be back there next week, and I'm not going to let it keep on perpetuating. Because I know he's my friend, and he's calling me to himself. A friend of God is going to live for God. A friend of God is willing to lay down their life for him. They've counted the cost and said it's better to live for Jesus than to just stay on the outskirts of town and watch it. to your calendar. I can't put I know Jesus and put that at the beginning of your day. The hard part is you're going to wake up tomorrow morning with a hundred more things on your calendar than you have. And you have to be the one who says, I will prioritize this. As Joshua said, as 
as for me and my house, this is what we are going to do. We are going to serve the Lord. We are going to wait for Him. And so we started this entire service with a challenge. Pastor Vanessa was up here. She said, I'm going to challenge you to not allow this to be there. We had an amazing week. But I want to challenge you and, and, and give that, not even challenge, but invitation that Jesus gives to us in friendship. And maybe you're here this morning and you realize your priorities are out of whack. You, you love Him. You're saved by Him. But you want to go deeper into this reality and allow it to impact your entire family. If you prioritize Jesus yourself, it will begin to trickle down so you can prioritize Him in your family. And so what I want to do, I'm going to invite some of the pastors up. Pastor Richard, please, Pastor Clyde, Brother Rick, if you come on up as well. things, and I want to put him first for the sake of my own heart, for the sake of friendship with him, and for the sake of my family. If you're a parent in the room, and you're saying this for your family, let's come to your spouse and everything. Let's come to your children. We just want to take a second here and pray over you. Let me pray a blessing. Pray a prayer of God. We're here because of you. We're here because we love you, because we need you. Maybe you're in the room, and, and this is your first time even hearing this message about friendship with Jesus. We love you. You're here and you're saying, I, I, I don't even know him, but I've heard about him and I, I desire him. If that's you this morning, and you just for the first time want to take a step into relationship with the one true God, I want to invite you as well. What I'm going to do, I'm going to pray. When you're already coming forward, please do if you're ready. But if you're in any of those places, you're an individual, you're a family, whoever you are, wherever you are, you're saying, I need to prioritize this man. This lover of my soul, this one who's called me to friendship. I invite you forward to pray for me. I'm going to pray. I'll invite you forward. Jesus, thank you for your goodness to us. Thank you that you have invited us into friendship. Thank you that you're inviting us deeper into your love. And that when we get to know you more, Lord God, it's not more scary, but it's better. You have the best things in store for our lives. And so, Jesus, I pray that today would be a day where salvation comes to homes. Lord, we're going to restore family to them as we're saying, I will prioritize the Lord. Jesus, I pray that today would be a day where, where we say there are good things, but there's a best thing, and it's the best of the Jesus. And so, God, I pray, give us courage today, Lord Jesus, to, to say yes to the best, Lord God, and maybe say no to things that, that really aren't that great, Lord God. Things that are getting in the way, Lord, we want to lay them down at your feet. Maybe there are things, church, and you're saying, I, I've been doing this more, and it's, it's not even a bad thing. It's not even bad, but I need to lay it at the feet because it's distracting me. Maybe it's just a distraction in your heart. Would you bring it before Jesus today? Father, we love you. We thank you. We worship you. And we center ourselves around you in your beautiful and precious name. Amen. Come forward if that's you. Call prayer. Let's worship you together.
True.